there's this remote island in Indonesia. It's right at the tip where the sea comes sort of crashing into this channel. And through this corridor are whales and dolphins and all kinds of animals. And at the tip of this island is this village called Namakara. There's no place on earth that we know of where more manta rays are being killed than in that single village. We realized if we were going to deal with the manta issue, we had to go to ground zero. These are That's manta rays. So they make like sets of 20 or 40, and they're, they're about $20 a set, and you get a couple of sets off of manta at maximum. And then you get about five to $600 from the gills. There's a gill, so you can oh see God, the end of it. All well, the uh, cartilage will be sent to China to be crushed down to, uh, into pills for um, uh, glucine sulfate for their sore joints and stuff. We sat down, we meet with Kapala Dessa, who's the chief. Masyarakat nelayan pikir rombongan datang melarang manta. Kalau rombongan ini punya misi dalam kerangka melestarikan kepada masyarakat kami yang ada di sini, kami mengharapkan ada jalan keluar. Dan hasil tangkapan manta ini menjadi komoditi ekonomi yang bisa diperjualkan untuk membiayai anak-anak untuk Dan mata pencarian di, di darat tidak ada hasil pertanian, yeah. kebun tidak ada, mereka tidak punya pilihan lain. Initially, they weren't very welcoming, they didn't want us to stay. And ultimately, we managed to talk our way onto one of the fishing vessels. Ning, ask him how they caught it. A couple of hours into the fishing trip, they saw this black figure on the surface, just cruising. Blood starts to color the water. Over the course of an hour, this thing struggles for its life. It's big. And I'm looking at this and I'm going, God, I can't do this. He just sticks in the brain of this animal and it just freaks out. And I actually watched its soul just disappear in front of me. And then it went limp. Oh, hurry. No, don't, don't, don't panic, don't panic. As we're going towards the village, an armada of boats start streaming past us. And they're all triangulating on this group of manta rays that have come into their waters. First thing they do is start hacking into the gills. With the advent of traders providing diesel-powered engines and a supply chain all the way out to China, they transitioned very quickly to 
a full-on commercial outfit. And it's only a few years before the manta rays and would be wiped out. They realize the numbers are dropping. Even if we weren't here, they realize something has to change. What are their children going to be doing? They're going to have nothing left. It's just losing a bit of magic, you know? The world, without that species, to me, it's, it's empty, you know? In 200 years, people will look back on this particular period and say to themselves, how did those people at that time just allow all these amazing creatures to vanish? But it would be very little use in me or anybody else exerting all this energy to save the wild places if people are not being educated into being better stewards than we've been. If we all lose hope, there is no hope. Without hope, people fall into apathy. There's still a lot left that's worth fighting for. About two decades ago, the Baiji dolphin was extremely vulnerable. There was hundreds of them left. I mean, I thought, well, there, there's enough out there. Somebody's going to do something to save this animal. This animal, it wasn't just the last of its species. It was the last of an entire family of cetaceans. So I thought, humans, somebody somewhere has got to go out and save these animals. They have to because they're dying off. They're all gone now. They went extinct. In my lifetime, they went extinct. So, we always think that there's gonna be somebody else around to save these animals. <laughs>